Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be focusing on this area, in between the elevated tram line and the road plates, where I'm going to put a park. Now the reason for choosing a park for this particular area is because the main viewing angle of the city is from this direction, i.e. the door of the Lego room. So I don't want to have any open back buildings facing onto these roads and therefore having their backs exposed to the main viewing angle. In addition to that, if they were buildings with backs, i.e. modular buildings or semi-modular buildings or even just open back buildings with a fake back put on, they would be in quite a narrow space because we need to give a bit of clearance around this elevated tram line. So they'd be very narrow. So I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Also very narrow buildings with four walls, i.e. a back on as well, are very hard to see into and, and don't look particularly great in my opinion. So I want something open that can be viewed from all angles and a park will fit the bill. We've already got the railway lines running on green base plates. So extending green base plates into this area, which is currently bare table, will just extend that green area and sort of make more of a seamless gap. Indeed, we've even got this area around the corner from the town hall, which could be included in the park, ending in a nice uh, blossom tree. So this whole area is sort of up for grabs. So what I'm gonna do first is design a few sort of rides, swings, that sort of thing, slides to go in the area and probably a few minifigures to enjoy it and then see what I can come up with. Right, well I want to have a park that's full of equipment for children to play on. I don't want sort of a country park type thing. So first of all I've got a roundabout. Now this is the roundabout that was in the Fun the Park set, set 60134 from 2016. That was a people pack um, and is quite widely known. So that's very straightforward, but there's absolutely no need to change that. It's got some bright colors and obviously it moves. I'd love to motorize it, but I think it would probably be too much effort for the reward that it would give. So there's one. I'll just put it on this base plate to enable me to show it to you. The second one I've made very quickly and easily is a seesaw. It's very basic using a few Technic elements just to provide the motion. Otherwise very simple indeed but big enough for two minifigures to sit on it obviously. So that's in some different bright colours, red and black. So it's a good contrast to the roundabout. Another thing I've got is this piece, and I thought I could use it as a sand pit because some playgrounds have a sand pit for young children to sort of sit in and play with a spade or something. It's quite a, an unusual piece actually for Lego. The piece number is 4082, and um, it's actually a Fabuland piece from way back in 1980, and it was part of a set 3634 Charlie Crow's Carry All, apparently, though I got it on Bricklink, so that's the only set it came in, in yellow. So that's a good piece. And I've also acquired from Friends sets, but again, just through Bricklink, two slides. I've got in medium azure, this sort of short straight slide piece, and this curved, much steeper slide in this lovely purple color. So again, this gives us fantastic contrast. There's a bit of similarity in some colours, but if we put them far apart, then we won't notice. So I've just got to work out how to integrate these two. And I did start with this one. And I was thinking I could use, because they often use wooden natural sort of pieces in these places, something very simple. And I thought I'd use more of these Palisade bricks just to make a sort of set of steps up. Quite straightforward. 
and then to represent a sort of crash mat these are the only tiles I have in the right colour spare so four one by three tiles but that keeps it quite compact and I think that looks quite fun and appropriate you can see what it is and just to test it yep it works so I've had a bit of a play and what I've come up with is this kind of an adventure playground setup with a rope bridge some steps and the purple slide now I was very keen to use this rope bridge piece because it's a really fantastic old piece somewhere in my city but it's quite hard to get one in an appropriate place in a sort of built-up area so um, I'm really glad that it, it works here you'll also see it's a slightly different brown given that it's an old piece so it's actually an old brown rather than reddish brown but the difference isn't significant so obviously we've got one step then a turret a walkway another turret and the slide down and I've also managed to dig out some purple tiles for a sort of landing area for this slide as well so let's test this one yep that works too excellent so we're getting quite a few bits of apparatus now another one that I did was a set of swings now I've seen lots of different designs for these and I quite like the ones that use actual chain pieces for the chains that hold up the swings but I've decided to go with aerials which also have a nice swinging action and can sit a, a minifigure on just because they're a bit smaller really and I want um, I want everything to fit into quite a tight area so it's its size really does matter I'm trying to get as much in a smaller space as possible so this is a really simple structure another bright color and some really good shape that's very pleasing there in the yellow arches so there's that also I thought I'd get some of those fun rides that are kind of an animal on a kind of spring now I've used a hinge instead of a spring but I've made a, a sheep one kind of a bit of a creator style sort of design but nonetheless you can sort of tell it's supposed to be a sheep and that would sort of bounce like that with a child on it or an adult who's young at heart and here's another one which is kind of a, a rocket which is a bit similar to the rocket ride we looked at recently but a lot smaller and again sadly not motorized so there we go that's quite a lot now I'm also going to try and do a climbing frame because I think that would be pretty popular with the minifigs so let's try that right I've had another play and one color I think is underrepresented is blue in all of this uh, so I use blue for my climbing frame which is here so it's quite hard to get the offset right for these to use these pieces as the climbing structure I've tried a number of different ideas but this is the best one that I had the pieces for so it's really just three columns of uh, modified plates to act as the grabbers to hold on to the four black pieces uh, with bricks and so on just to come to the same height overall but I think from a distance with a child attached that will look like a good climbing frame right so we've got quite a lot here to be going on with so I'm going to try and arrange these as best I can to make best use of the space because I also want to have some seating area for sort of mums and dads and um, lots of plants and trees and so on and as I keep saying it is a very tight area so I don't know exactly what I'm going to achieve I might not even be able to fit all of these in and that would be a shame so uh, here's hoping here we are in the Lego room and the first piece of equipment I was trying to position is the adventure playground and slide but it's already as you can see pretty big and quite hard to fit in this space 
and then it occurred to me that maybe I could use the fact that this is a half circle slide to actually wrap around one of the posts of the raised tram line. So rather than being all in front, I could have it going around one of the poles, which would also make it quite good fun. Now I'm going to have to adjust how it's connected to this turret because the rest of the piece of equipment is still going to have to go from top to bottom, but that could work well. Right, so I've just basically turned the slide a quarter turn, so it comes out the back of that turret and comes back to face us if we're looking at it from the front. So I should now be able to wrap it around one of these posts. Now that's already starting to interfere with this. The tram will hit that if it's even a tiny bit over there. So I can't put it on that one. So I can either remove this post or no, it will go around that one, won't it? So I think that'll work. There we go. So if I position it something like that, you can't see the slide fantastically well from this perspective because it's going down and around there, but I think that might still be the best position for it. I'll continue to investigate. Right, so I've managed to fit it in with the purple slide piece going around the back of the raised tram stanchion. And the slide does work. If I put Robin on it, there we go. Now it's not the easiest to see from all directions, but um, I do think it's about the only way we're gonna get this in and it makes amazing use of the space given that it actually goes behind the stanchions uh, rather than entirely in front of it. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. It's just a pity that the mirror version of that piece doesn't exist because then I could have put it on this side and had it coming out here uh, and it had been a lot more visible from most of the Lego room. And here it is from the back. Right, to continue, we'll put in the climbing frame and to make the best use of space, I think this one needs to go very close to the adventure playground. So I'll have that in front of the main span of the rope bridge. Now from a standing height, you can still see very clearly the entire rope bridge, so it doesn't completely block it as it might from that low angle. Okay, so next I'll put in the swings. Very simple construction, just in front of that tree, as far back as they'll go, allowing for a fence in between. But what's becoming fast apparent, if I think about throwing on roundabouts and other slides and all the rest of it, is that this area is going to very, very quickly become overly full. So I think what I might have to do is extend this green area onto the pavement a bit by using some six wide green plates, just to give me a much wider area to work with to get in all the things I want. So I'm gonna put down these plates and uh, try again. I've added the line of six wide and in some places eight wide plates in green just to give us more area. And I think that's gonna be enough to get all the main constituents of the park in there. I've also taken the opportunity to fill in this area with pavement just to make it look complete and I've done that using a combination of the new triangular and this sort of corner with the triangle piece taken out of it and the combination of those gives a nice sort of diagonal line for the corner. I think that's actually an improvement on the way that a lot of people do it with square tiles so 
that's good. I've also added a couple of bins. Um, one's got recycling stickers on both the lid and on the front, and the other one's for regular waste. And you can see I've added a fence all the way around the park with one by one by three bricks with a sort of ice cream swirl on the top for the posts. Now I haven't got enough of these fence pieces as it stands so most of the back is missing. It will be along this line here. You can see it started here. I've put a goal in for the kids to play with, with a football. And I'm also missing a couple of the ice cream swirls for a few of these posts, but I'll do those in my next uh, order of bricks, I think. I've also started a line of flowers along this side, which I think I'm going to do along the entire length of the front, as long as I've got enough green, and I've definitely got enough different coloured flower pieces to do that. So I'm going to finish the edge up, and then I'm going to start trying to arrange all our pieces of equipment as best I can in this enlarged but still pretty tight area. There's a nice bit of colour with all the flowers along the front. I've also added the sand pit and a tree. And I've also raided my tiles bag for as many different coloured round tiles as I can to make these bright stepping stones. I quite like those. Another thing when I was looking at bits I could use was another one of these ladder pieces, which I thought I could add on to the adventure playground as some monkey bars. They're a bit high for children, but the effect is still good. In the next step, I put on the two spring rides, the seesaw, a smaller slide and the roundabout. And I think to set the scene, we need some people really. So I need a couple of park benches and I thought a whole family could be having a birthday party in the park. So I've got sort of young mum with baby, can of Coke, cookie and a basket on one park bench. On another park bench, one of the children with a big purple marker, drawing a lovely picture, some chocolate milk and a bit of watermelon. And another parent, you'll notice everyone's wearing party hats. I've got a few different coloured ones in recent brick hall and um, I'm having to use just the hair pieces that have got a hole in, which aren't as many as you'd think actually. So I've got a, another parent, as I said, and she's got a push buggy with a different baby in. This is the baby from one of the Christmas sets, but you can get it on Lego bricks and pieces separately. If you want that one, it's really cute. It's got a sort of reindeer baby grow on. And the birthday boy himself, who's got a gold hat on, and that's from the series minifigure with the man coming out of the cake. Presents. Another baby chair for the one that's being fed. A boy with an orange hat. A girl with a tutu dress on and a purple hat and there may be one person who's not part of the party but is still using the park. Right, so I'm going to get the rest of those arranged. And that's my finished park. There's a heck of a lot going on there. Lots of rides, lots of things to do and lots of people. I dare say we could probably fit another half a dozen children in this park playing around, but I'll leave it at that for now. It is incredibly crowded in there. You're pretty much falling over one piece of equipment to get to the next one, but 
as I've said in many of my videos, I like it nice and dense. All these big spaces are, are just a waste in my opinion. So that's very good. There'll be one final touch to add. And it's in a recent haul, I got a dog, which is from a friend's set. And I wasn't very sure about it. And I wasn't even sure I was gonna include it in my city because it's a bit sort of dewy eyed and so on. But I realized it also had the hole in the head that can take an attachment. So friend sets, they give them bows and goodness knows what else. But I can give the dog a party hat, which let's face it is absolutely hilarious. So that's what's gonna happen. And the dog can be joining the rest of the family in the park and somebody's attached a party hat to it. Brilliant. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome Lego videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we're going to finish off the marina with a few more buildings. See you then!